Hi, my name is Rachel Webster and I'm a Principal Director in Oncology. I'd like to walk you through treatment sequencing and how to navigate the complex system of pathways in the oncology ecosystem. It's a really exciting time to be in oncology at the moment and treatment sequencing is a really hot topic, but it's challenging. Some of the big challenges are associated with being able to get an accurate picture of the complex oncology treatment journey. Why is this a challenge? Because there's been an explosion of new therapies in recent years. Oncology R&D today is being built on combination therapies, and this is just making oncology landscapes even more complex. Some of the key themes around how to optimally sequence therapies in given indications. And actually, there often is no universal treatment sequence, and it's often controversial. What is happening today is that pharma strategists are being having to navigate very tough decisions without a map. So how do we navigate the complex pathways in oncology? Treatment sequencing can help with this. And there are a couple of scenarios that I will walk you through. The first one is about understanding positioning and competitive threats in the US landscape. And the second one focuses more on understanding nuances between physician specialty types in the EU5. So in the first example, a pharma strategist is trying to understand where their PD-1 and CTLA-4 combination therapy is positioned in the melanoma market. She needs to identify competitive threats, understand positioning in different clinical scenarios, assess opportunities for expanding market share, and ultimately plan for portfolio optimization and future R&D efforts. The first thing that she can look at is our treatment algorithm data. This shows a range of drug treatable patient populations, and it's the relationship and interconnectivity between these populations that we display here. Overlaid on this diagram are essential market metrics relating to drug treatment rates and also, also drug patient shares. So for example, we can see that the PD-1 CTLA-4 combination therapy, Opdivo and Yervoy, is capturing most use in the first line BRAF wild type setting. It's actually nearly double that as in the BRAF mutation positive population. And we can see in the BRAF positive population that there are more drugs and it's the BRAF MEK inhibitors that are capturing most share and constraining the use of this PD-1 CTLA-4 inhibitor. But crucially, we know that oncologists prescribing decisions is not just determined by BRAF status, it's also determined by what patients have received previously and the patient's molecular disease characteristics. So for us to fully understand the landscape and the opportunities, we need to home in on some specific treatment scenarios. For example, whether a patient is rapidly or has slowly progressing disease. So we asked oncologists to think about BRAF mutation positive patients who are rapidly progressing and slowly progressing and tell us about their most frequently prescribed sequence of treatments. So we can see that in both scenarios, in rapidly progressing patients and in slowly progressing patients, Opdivo plus Yervoy is the most commonly prescribed in the second line after a BRAF MEK inhibitor. We can see this here. But in slowly progressing patients, Opdivo and Yervoy is most frequently prescribed in the first line treatment setting. We can see this here. But for a complete picture, we need to consider the BRAF wild type patients. And we can see that a similar percentage of physicians report Opdivo and Yervoy use in rapidly and slowly progressing wild type patients. We can see this here. But Opdivo and Yervoy is most frequently prescribed as a second line therapy following Yervoy 
in slowly progressing patients. And we see this here. So using this data, the pharma strategist was able to understand the position and competitive threats of the PD-1 and CTLA-4 inhibitor and plan future R&D efforts. So now let's have a look at the second scenario. In this example, a brand manager of a prostate cancer hormonal agent wants to evaluate the different treatment patterns and dynamics between EU5 oncologists and neurologists. And he needs to do a number of things. He needs to defend share and position by drilling down into physician treatment sequences, execute life cycle and commercial strategies, examine patterns in treatment sequences for sales and marketing resources, and finally, understand the nuances in positioning and sequencing by physician specialty type. Similar to the melanoma treatment algorithm that we showed earlier, um, we also have a prostate cancer treatment algorithm as well, which displays the key patient populations from early stage hormone sensitive disease through to metastatic castrate resistant disease. And similarly, important market metrics about drug treatment rates and patient shares are shown on this diagram. And importantly, we have data that shows differences between oncologists and neurologists in the EU5. But we can also drill down into more commercially relevant treatment scenarios. And in these examples, we ask physicians to tell us about their most frequent treatment sequences in metastatic castrate resistant prostate cancer patients who are either asymptomatic or mildly symptomatic or who have symptomatic disease. And we have data among medical oncologists and urologists. So in the first example, we'll just pick out two or three examples here because there's a lot of data. So in the first example, in asymptomatic patients, Zytiga is the second most frequently prescribed first line treatment among both oncologists and among urologists but the sequence is different according to the specialty type. So among oncologists, Zytiga is most commonly prescribed after docetaxel. We can see this here, but according to urologists, Zytiga is most commonly prescribed in the second line after LHRH agonists. We can also see similar patterns in symptomatic patients, whereby Zytiga is most commonly prescribed in the second line after docetaxel, according to oncologists, and after LHRH agonists, after urologists. So using this data, the brand manager was able to understand the similarities and the differences between physician specialty and use this to plan marketing resources. For more information about our treatment sequencing solution, contact us for a demo.